Welcome back everyone, and uh, today we're going to be reviewing the Hot Toys Obi-Wan Kenobi figure, the deluxe version from Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. So as you can see, this it's a pretty big box, it comes with a lot of stuff, um, so let's check it out. So right off the bat, as per usual, you have some really cool box art of the figure itself. You have this first tray here, and then you actually have multiple trays inside. And so here's a first look at the figure. And as you can see, this figure comes with a ton of accessories. So let's start checking some of them out. So it's hard to say where to start. I guess we could start with the lightsaber. So the lightsaber has a ton of detail. It looks just like Obi-Wan's lightsaber from the movie. Um, you actually get two different styles of how to put this on the belt um, that you can put in. And so I love how the lightsaber has a metallic look that actually makes it look like it's made of metal. And just all the intricate details that Obi-Wan's lightsaber has. It's very well done. And of course the blade is removable. And you have details on the inside there. And you can interchange this blade with blade that's in motion, which looks really cool. You have a nice gradient effect on this. And then of course you have Obi-Wan's comm link. And you got some nice paintwork detail on there. On the back and the front. And then you have a really cool battle droid that's been damaged, which I think is one of the coolest accessories that this figure comes with. But just the scale of this thing shows you how cool a six scale figure this would be, which thankfully we're finally going to get. And uh, so that's pretty neat. And you got really cool details in the inside. And you have an effect of the heat from the lightsaber as if it was just cut in half. And then you also have the head, which is you can kind of attach somewhat on here. Yeah, I think it attaches like so. To give it the effect that you just slice the droid at an angle. And again, you have that same effect of the heat on the metal there. And you have details on the inside. Yeah, it looks really great. You got lots of texture and just uh, weathering effects. And then you have the arm of the droid that got cut off. Really cool details on the blaster, which the blaster looks a lot bigger than I would expect it to be. And there's no articulation or anything on these pieces, they're all sculpted, just giving the effect that they can move. But And then you also have Baby Luke which he has at the end of the movie. You got really cool texture, this is sculpted plastic, but it looks like it's made of fabric. And you can actually, no you can't, I thought you could move the head a little bit, but you can't. But it is like a separate piece, so. But not bad, looks pretty real. You also have these two holograms. So you have a hologram of Anakin Skywalker and Emperor Palpatine. And what's so cool about the holograms, since they're slightly larger scale, you know, for one, they're hollow, but two, they're, they have this uh, line texture, 3D texture work on them to make them look even more realistic. And when you put them on the hologram stand itself, which is a really cool accessory that I've never seen. I've never seen an accessory this big for any Hot Toys figure that I can think of. So it's really awesome that they included this. And the fact that it lights up is even better because when you put the holograms on here, it makes them look like they're actually real. Gives it a really cool holographic effect. So as you can see, the light really sells this effect of the hologram. It makes it look so much more realistic, like it's an actual hologram.
And then you also, for the stand, which is really cool, is you have two interchangeable base plate designs. Um, you have like a metal Mustafar looking one. And then you have the sand, maybe the, uh, not Geonosis, but that planet that Utapa, I think, where General Grievous was, where he fought General Grievous. And then you have a standard hook stand. Uh, nothing special here, just normal. And then you just take either one of these and you put them on here. So if I wanted to use this one, and what I actually do is you can peel this back part off because it's a sticker. But I actually like to keep it where I can interchange them at all times, so I just do this. And yeah, it wiggles around a little bit, but if you secure it enough on there, it's usually fine. My nameplate keeps coming off, unfortunately, but it just snaps back on. And as per usual, I love how Hot Toys has a metal nameplate. I wish they would do that for more figures. Uh, it's got a 3D metallic texture to it, which is awesome. And last but not least, you have the hands. So you have two force push hands here or open hands, I guess you could say. Uh, what's really cool about these hands for everyone is you have a lot of details on them. You have skin texture, you have veins, a lot more texture than you usually get on Hot Toys hands. You have two what looks like lightsaber holding hands. A classic Obi-Wan gesture hand, which is really cool. R P sign. And then you have a relaxed hand Right here, which could probably hold certain things. And then you have this hand, which could hold the comm link. So if I were to take the comm link, I could just slide in like so. And again, the texturing detail on the fingernails and just the fingers and the veins, all of that just always so well done. And then you have the interchangeable arm here for the light up effect. Now I put the light up lightsaber arm effect on the figure a long time ago and it's such a pain to take on and off that I just decided to leave it on there. Um, but this is the normal arm that you would take off the figure. And as you can see by the scratch marks, unfortunately I had damaged my figure with pliers trying to get the arm off. Because again, this joint is such a tight fit on the figure that it's almost impossible to get it off without pliers. Um, some people can do it, um, but anyways you would take this arm and basically put the lightsaber arm on and I'll show you all the functionality of that later um, but again yeah it's, it's a really big pain to take on and off so I just decided to leave it on there and here we have the Obi-Wan figure in full form um, with the robe on so just taking a first look at this figure um, you got lots of layers here so let's go up to the head sculpt So as you can see, this is honestly one of my favorite Hot Toys head sculpts that they've ever done. I think the detail is spot on. I mean, I feel like I'm looking at a photograph of Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan here. As I'm looking at the figure, I mean, this is mind-blowing to me. The amount of detail they're able to get, for whatever reason, with this particular character, um, I don't know why. This, this is the best, most realistic looking head sculpt. I have ever seen a Hot Toys do, and that's why this figure remains one of my favorite figures in the collection. Um, now, what did I say it's my favorite character of all time? I don't know if I would say that, because I like Star Wars, but I tend to like Marvel a little bit more, um, and superhero stuff, so so yeah, it's something. it really means something when I say that this is the best head sculpt in my collection and that's why this is one of my favorite figures in the collection because it's just as simple as this is the best most realistic looking head sculpt in the collection i have so far um, from almost every angle this looks like ewan mcgregor is obi one and just the texture work i mean from the freckles moles or whatever else there might be on here um, it's all done so well and so it's no wonder that so many people want this figure and why this figure is at such a high price right now on the aftermarket. I mean, it just comes right down to a great head sculpt. Yeah. And then moving on down, you have a lot of cool texturing on the robe itself, uh, multi-layered. So all this is like removable and stuff. I wouldn't mess with it because it'd be a pain to get it in the right spot again. There's no wires in this actually. I thought there were, but no, there's not that I can tell. 
but there is a thicker layer on the edge. So why don't I just go and remove the robe to see more details. All right, so when you go downward, you have the belt, which is a sculpted. Actually, no, there's some there's some pleather in here mixed with uh, plastic pieces and buttons, and that's where you would attach the lightsaber on this belt. And continue towards the back. Uh, none of these are functional, unfortunately, but it does look really cool. You have Velcro strap here and on this piece, so you could technically remove the home belt if you wanted to. And the robes continue on the back. You got just slight weathering on it, which is really awesome. And you can kind of see a little bit of weathering on the on the sleeves too, and some weathering on the bottom here. And then the coolest part is the boots are actually like, they're not sculpted, they're not plastic, they're not rubber, but they're actually some type of uh, pleathery material, I think. That is just such a cool, nice touch. I love that. It just makes it seem much more genuine, much more realistic, and they haven't gotten damaged so far, so I can't complain. Uh, that also means more flexibility too. Now, as far as the robe itself, there is no wires in the hood part of the robe. It's a really soft kind of flexible material, which stretches a little bit. Uh, there's no wire, actually there's a wire in this part of the robe only. So this long part right here. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You have a simple robe that you can put on or off the figure. And so in terms of articulation, starting with the head sculpt, um, you can of course turn the head 360. The neck is connected to the head, so you just have it attached to the body only. There's no joint here between the neck and the head. Um, you can move the head forward about that much and backward about that much. You can move the head side to side ever so slightly, but not too far. And yeah, when you turn the head that way, you can move more down and back. And my one complaint about this figure in terms of articulation is the shoulders. Yeah, you can push the arms pretty far up and you know, you can kind of push them forward. I think that's where my complaint is. It's the shoulders are hard to work with. I don't know why, is there something about these shoulders where the joints are very hard to work with? Unless maybe I'm doing something wrong, I'm not sure, but I just always have difficulty with the shoulders getting them in the right position, getting them to look natural. They just, they tend to slum down too much and it just doesn't look good. So it's kind of frustrating. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can move the arm up actually pretty high and you can move them forward about that much. I believe that brown undersuit makes it a bit tricky. So you do have some good flexibility. I think it's just making the shoulders look natural that I struggle with the most. And the elbows are somewhat double jointed. Yeah, they're double jointed. And you can move them back only about that far. So, uh, there is a joint in the stomach, which you can push about that far forward. And then you can push about that far back and swivel. And that's about the only joint there. And in terms of the hips, you can, uh, of course, you have a lot of flexibility because the robe is flexible. So 90 degrees that way, and you can't really move it too far back. The knee, I imagine, let's see, is almost double jointed. Uh, it just stops because of the boot there, it looks like. And you can move it forward about that far. And of course, since the boots are not sculpted, you can move them a little bit more than usual. But not too much, because again, this is a uh, kind of a thick material so and I probably wouldn't push it too much all the time because it might might cause some damage to this material I'm not sure all right so let's check out this lightsaber effect so when you have the light up arm in place after a lot of difficulty you have to roll up the sleeve there now I know everyone's gonna tag me for this but I had to cut this brown sleeve 
there's just no other way for me to get it to roll up or to put the battery or anything like that in. It was just, it's driving me crazy. So look, I'm not gonna sell this figure. I'm probably gonna keep this figure for the rest of my life because like I said, this is one of my favorite figures in the collection. So to me personally, you're not gonna see this brown sleeve anyways. And it doesn't bother me personally since I'm not worried about damage because I'm not gonna sell this figure. So you can do whatever you want. It's tricky to roll the brown sleeve up because it's such a tight fit on the arm but not impossible. Um, so you have the switch here and the batteries go in here and you just flip that switch on and you have the blue LED light or whatever type of light that is. You take the lightsaber blade and you put it in there like so and then you turn the lights off and you can have that really cool lightsaber effect. And I think this looks awesome. This is actually, it doesn't look that great on video necessarily, but this is one of the brightest lightsaber blades that I have out of all the Hot Toys figures that I own so far. Next to Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon's a close second. He might actually be first. I'd have to check again. So you can switch this blade out with the swooping lightsaber blade. So you get a nice slashing effect, which is awesome. Um, so that's it's really cool that they inc included that with this figure. Now that they're starting to include it with more figures, I think it's a nice effect for posing. And you can do all kinds of creative stuff with it. So yeah, it's really cool. Now there's one other thing to note, um, since there is, this is a light up effect, there's a wire running from the arm to, through the wrist and to the hand. So I think even in the instructions it says not to turn this 360 over and over again. Because if you keep doing that, you'll probably end up twisting and then eventually breaking the wire. And then the light up effect might not work anymore. So I would advise against that. You can still turn the hand with the light up effect I just wouldn't turn it over and over and over again. I would know the limit and just kind of keep it there within that bracket. But other than that, it's good to go. And of course, you know, you can move this every which way. So in terms of my overall thoughts about this figure, like I said before, this is one of my favorite Hot Toys figures that I own. Um, it's definitely in the top two or three for me. And it really does come down to the head sculpt. It's one of the most realistic, photographically accurate, just high quality head sculpts that I've ever seen Hot Toys do. Um, comment below if you disagree and if there's like maybe a, another head sculpt that tops this one. Because uh, if so, I'm curious to see it and I'm curious to hear about it. So let me know. But as far as I understand, like from what I've seen so far with Hot Toys, this is the best one I've seen. Um, also, the reason why this is in the top two or three for me is because it comes with so many different accessories and not just like small accessories but you get massive accessories too you get the huge hologram stand you get the battle droid and you get the light up lightsaber those, those three are just amazing even one of those by itself is amazing of course almost every jedi hot toys has a light up lightsaber now so that's not as big a deal anymore um, but the hologram stand and the battle droid that just blows me away uh and the baby luke like that's such a cool extra thing like i wish that's what i'm talking about whenever i'm like oh man i wish hot toys would do more have more accessories like that's what I mean like that's creative to include the baby Luke when they didn't even have to when with most figures they wouldn't include little extra things like that they're only in one scene but I really wish they would do that with more figures I mean you think back to the older Hot Toys figures like the Indiana Jones one included so many accessories and for a great price I really hope Hot Toys can do that with more figures I kind of see them doing a little bit now more often like with the recent Doctor Strange figures and maybe the Wanda one a little bit more. Um, I hope they continue doing that and they keep coming up with like creative extra accessories to include because that's what puts a figure up on the top of the list for me. Um, I also think the other positives of this figure is that the boots are not sculpted plastic, they're not sculpted rubber, they're actually like a real material that the boots were you know probably made of in the movie. Um, uh, they actually look real. They look. It gives it more realism. The boots have more flexibility as a result. Uh, maybe not the best one, best flexibility ever, but still better than sculpted. I just love how the boots look. They just because they're made of that material. They they look and feel real, and it just sells the figure even more. I also like how the belt is detailed and has all of those different mixed media. I like how they include the robe. So the only other positive I can think of is that they included the exchangeable base plate, uh, the different graphics that you can exchange on the base plate. So that's a really cool feature. 
And so in terms of the negatives for this figure, the only negatives I can think of is that I wish that the shoulders were just better articulated. For some reason, I have difficulty with the shoulders and posing, and they tend to slump down too much, which just, to me, doesn't make it look as realistic. I almost wish I could exchange the body for this figure with a different one with better articulation. Because, um, yeah, I just the shoulders just frustrate me, and I tend to not want to use them as a result. So, yeah, I mean, I think really just the articulation, the body itself is what bothers me. Um, other than that, I really honestly can't think of... Well, actually, the uh, other negative, the big negative for me, is the light-up lightsaber arm is such a pain to put, to put on and to take off with the other arm. You know, with that elbow joint, it's just, it's too tight and too difficult to get on and off with that sleeve to the brown sleeve. Um, I'm glad that they updated that with the Qui-Gon figure and they made it to where the sleeve part is actually uh, also removable. Because the reason why I had to cut into the sleeve is because it's actually attached to the figure itself. So you have to try to squeeze that huge forearm into the sleeve. And it's just, it's really difficult. And I'm so glad they changed that with the Qui-Gon one. It made it so much easier. So that's my only other big negative with this figure. Um, and that's about it. I really can't think of anything else. Um, overall, this is one of my favorite Star Wars figures that I own. It may not be my favorite Star Wars movie of all time, but this figure is just so well made and well constructed and well painted. I just have to have it at the top of my list. And um, yeah, just almost every light in the head sculpt looks great. So, yeah, I'm so glad that I was able to find a good discount on this figure, and yeah, I don't regret it, and I would highly recommend it if you're a fan of this character and of that movie. And let me know what you think about it. I want to hear your opinion in the comments below and what you think about this figure, positives and negatives, and uh, yeah, until the next video.